Hi, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And before we get into the video, I want to say a heartfelt thank you for subscribing to the channel. We hit a thousand subscribers um, last week. Um, sorry for how late the video is, but a lot of things been happening. First of all, I was on, I had to take a break um, vacation, and then I'm back now, and so I'm start back posting videos. But still, wanted to say thank you. In this video, I'm going to start a multi-part section four on Flutter basics. And that is to help us get our hands around what a Flutter application is like. And you and I are going to be learning these things together. And then we're going to go into learning about specific widgets and how to use them and combine widgets and all those other things. But we have to creep before we can walk. So let's start creeping. So here I am in my learning Flutter directory. And you can see some of the things we've done already. And so I'll create a new directory for this mini series, Flutter Basics. And so this command already allowed me to create a directory and change into it. So of course it should be empty. And what I'll do is I will create a Flutter application. And so I'll say Flutter create, and let's call it part one. Um, and so let's run that. And we should get an application, a directory created for us. It says it's done we'll soon be able to change into that directory and run our application. So you can notice that it run the Flutter Doctor, which we saw from before when we did the installation. And now we can start up our device and run the application. So we'll see the into part one. And if you, I've shown you already how to open minus, open minus A, and this will start simulator on Mac OS, but so I'm not going to go over how to open a simulator or a virtual device. We covered that already in the previous video when we went through how to install Flutter and all that other good stuff. So once you're in the Flutter website, which is flutter.io or Flutter Dev, you can find a lot of great documentation. One of the nice things about Flutter is how well it's documented. And you can click on Get Started, and it goes straight into Installing. And we did that already, setting up your editor and all this other good stuff. So we can skip all that, all that sort of thing. Um, you can look at development. You can look at some sample tutorials. Um, this is all things that we're going to cover eventually. But if you are impatient, definitely go ahead and start playing with some of these things. And it tells you all about widgets. And of course, you have a link here to the widget catalog, which tells you about all the widgets. This is documentation for all the widgets basic widgets, input widgets, layout widgets, all those things that we're going to cover eventually. But this documentation is right there. OK, so let's get back to our little application. So I have my simulator running. In this case, I'm using an iOS simulator. And I can use Flutter Run to run my application. But I'm going to start up Visual Studio Code and use that for application development. So let me open it up a little bit here. Uh, you know what? I'll just give more space to code in and flip to the iOS simulator when I need to. So let's zoom in a bit uh, too much. That seems to be about right. Uh, let's do that. And so we can see that my simulator is detected below. Now that we have our Flutter application um, project loaded in Visual Studio Code, um, we want to go to the lib directory and click on main.dart. This is the entry point to your Flutter application. And we know that because one, there's main.dart, and also there's the main function. And when we wrote code in Dart before, we were writing a main.dart file and also a main function. Now, over time, we're going to go and look at some of these other files, but we don't need to worry about those right now. So no point in going and look at it. This is the outline of our program, but we're not going to be using this program at all. Instead, we will delete everything and start with a blank main.dart file. There's no point in running the demo application that it gave us. We've done that already. When we look at using our block pattern by integrating it into that sample application. So as before, we know how you would need a main function. And this is where everything starts off. So if we were doing a hello world application, we would say hello world. And we'll do something like that. 
we'll save this and let's open up a well i could right click and say run code and if you don't have the run code plugin installed don't worry just open up a terminal and you can do the right quite easily and from your terminal so this is our project directory i can go to the lib directory and there is my main.dart and i can say dart and then main.dart and this should also run my program and as you can see i have this output okay so that's fine all right so we have a very simple application nothing exciting but i just want to do a hello world equivalent in flutter now remember flutter is an sdk right so what is an sdk it's a set of libraries that you can use you sort of use it like a toolkit right you can go in there pull out the things that you need and use it to put together to build an application and so one of the things that we want to be able to do is use a text box to build a we want to build a uh, mobile application and the mobile application is going to say hello in a text box so how do we build a mobile application now this is an application we could compile it and so on and get a dart application but it's not going to be a mobile application that can run in i on an ios device like my iphone or my android and we cover all this in the previous video the benefit of using flutter so i'm not going to go over all of that right again instead i'll jump right into it and so the sdk the flutter sdk is already install and configure for this project and that was done when we run the flutter create command it created this project with all these directories and there's this thing called a pub spec you can think of your pub spec um, if you come from java it's like your maven, your maven palm file um, if you come from cc plus plus it's like your make file and it lists all your dependencies and essentially you can see that it's, here is a different dependency for flutter and as it says the as a flutter sdk there's also some dependencies for Cupertino icons, which we're not going to worry about. Okay, so again, like I said, we're going to review other files as we need to. So that makes the Flutter SDK and library available to our application. So once that's available, we can import it. So we can say import, and Flutter does import space and a single and a string. And so this is pretty much like how Go would do it if you're following my Go course. But anyway, so just try, like, like drawing the similarities when I see them between languages. And so now we have access to the material um, set of widgets from the Flutter package. Okay, so you can see here it says to use um, the material design use package Flutter slash material that dart. So the safest thing for now is just stick with material design for both iOS and Android, unless you have a really good reason to, because Material on iOS doesn't look as crazy as if you'd probably use the Cupertino widgets on uh, Android phone, but enough talking. So this is telling us that uh, we have access to the Material widgets. Now, remember we have included this, but we still haven't done anything to say that this should be a mobile application. We cannot just say print, where would it actually print to? A uh, mobile application would need, um, when you open it, to be able to render and text and so on in slightly different ways, text boxes, buttons, and so on. So what material, um, and what Flutter gives us is something called run app, which is a function we can, we can call run app. There it is. And if you look, you can see it's run app returns voice, so it's a void function, but it takes something called widget as your app. And notice what the documentation says is inflate the given widget and attach it to the screen. Great, that's all we really need to, to, to do to create a Flutter application is call this run app and give it an app, app being a widget. Okay, so where do we get widgets from or how do we create them? Now I've said that all this material important in the material that Dart gives us a, material, a bunch of widgets, right, right? Flutter widgets that implements the material design. Now, let's go take a look at the documentation. And so if we go over here and we take a look at, let's say, basic widgets. And we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. There's a text widget. That seems like a basic enough widget that would allow us to do hello world. So click on that and you can see this is a very simple widget to use. And let me zoom in a little bit. Font is a little too small. And it says a text widget displays a string of text with sta sing, um, simple style. 
Well, we can ignore all of that for now, and we can simply focus on using this text widget. So it looks like for a text widget is you have text, and then you can give it a string, and of course, some other name parameters. But let's try with just something very simple, and we can see we have a text widget, and we pass it a string. Okay, so we can save this to our variable. We can save our app. So in this case, our app is simply a text widget. That's all our app is. I think this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy if we can get this to work. So how do we run this? Well, surely we can do run. We have to sort of build it. And this is going to take a minute the first time. So I'll go to debug and I'm going to say start without debugging. And this is going to do some launch and compiling and all this other good stuff. And it's going to eventually start running my application here. So let me zoom in here to see. So you don't have to squint to see it. We can always put this in the background if we need to. Da, da, da. And there it is. And it looks like something is coming up. Ah, problems. Look at that. So it looked like if it was going to start, but it says no directionality widget found. Hmm. What is going on? So we're running this application. We said we want to build an application and we need to lay out some text. Well, remember, depending on which part of the world you are and your language, text may need to be laid out from left, right, or right, left. So without telling being able, um, without our application being able to know how we should lay out text, well, this is why it's complaining. Now, there are ways you can sort of get this for free where we can wrap this in some other widget, like a material widget, and it would know how to build to lay out text. So the question is, what can we do? How do we tell our text which direction we want things to be laid out? Well, if we click on the text widget or just hover over it, we'll see that there's a text direction property. So if we use the text direction, we should be able to pass an object or a value that help it in determining the text direction. So we do text direction and text direction, and we can use one of these. So are we going to do left to right, right to left? And so there we go, left to right. And so I'll save changes and let's go back here and see if our application is going to rebuild. Uh, maybe I need to reload it. And there it goes. It's coming up and bam, there is our text. It's all the way to the top of the screen. This makes sense because if it's going to do left to right, it has to start somewhere. So it started at the very top of the screen and it started laying out text from the left side of my screen top left and going over to the right. Of course, the screen has a notch and we're going to see later on how there are ways to address whether the screen has a notch, how Flutter can help you determine that and de only write in the safe areas. I'm using air quotes that you can't see, but at least we see how to get hello world on the screen. Now, of course, we can do some other things, right? If we go back to the documentation here, it tells you that you can do things like overflow, how to handle like you know text that's overflow with ellipsis if it's too long and you can put the style so let's try that so let's do this we're going to copy this and let's just add this to our things so we add this to our text box style and so now one of the things i want is for my Code to be laid out nicely. Now, usually this happens, you know, Flutter, um, Flutter really out. Um, the, usually the Flutter plugin would take care of stuff like this, but I don't know what's going on. So there we go. So I have a variable. And so, so I have the text, I have text direction, and then I have overflow, which is if it's too long, for the space that is defined for it by its parent. And we're going to talk about that later. Right now, this text box doesn't have any parent, so it has the entire screen for displaying text. Whereas we could have wrapped this text in another widget and constrain its size, but we're not going to worry with that. And there's the style. You know, font weight is bold. And so yeah. let's see, did it bold it? Let's reload this. 
and yep there it is it's bolded now and of course we can do things like color and so on if we hover over this if we hover over this we can look and we can see it how we have uh style we should see style somewhere text style and if we add text style oh there we are we have style already um and so here's text style and one of the things text style has is color so it has background color and uh, foreground color so we can add color to this by saying that our text style so i'm gonna put this in that line like this it's just easier to sort of read and i'll fix my formatting so it automatically formats these things properly but color and we can do colors that let's say we want to do um like i don't know green on yellow background for example green and then background color right and then i'll say colors that yellow and so save that and then let's go back over here and let's refresh and there you go i have green text on yellow background now again i am not talking about how to move this on the screen yet because right now all we're looking at is how to do a hello world and using one widget which is this text widget now i could make my code a bit a little bit easier to understand by simply having a function that returns a widget widget and let's call build for example and my build function returns all of this so if i move all of this here and i simply say return text widget now i can simply call this build function and i could get rid of this let's get rid of this and if i refresh I remember, um, so one of the things you should be aware of, if you make significant changes to your Flutter code, there's a chance that just hitting the refresh button, it may not work. So in that case, you might have to stop it and restart it. So just in case you make some significant change and it doesn't seem to want to take those significant change, well, just stop it and restart it. So let's see if, um, let's see, let's make sure I haven't broken my code. So let's do red and let's say, um, Let's wait and see if it's going to rebuild it by itself. It reloaded it, but it rebuilded it, but it didn't reload it. So I'll click reload. And no, yes, my code is not broken. So this is a very, very simple example of how to do a basic application. There's a mobile application. We can deploy this. We can see it always running here on my device. Now, how about if we wanted to center this in the screen? I'm talking vertically center, horizontally center, just center this in the screen. Flutter has widgets for that. And we will cover, again, we'll go through and cover the widgets in a little bit more detail as we get to each one. But it's okay to know about the, the center widget just so we can make our output look a little bit better. We don't want to show our friends that we created a Hello World mobile application and they can barely see or read what is it that we put in on the screen, right? Um, so let's do the, let's make our application slightly better and we'll create a variable here with our name. And so we say var name equals, and in my case, uh, let me do some code. All right. I'll do that. And then say, hello world. My name is, and then I can do name, All right? And so of course we'll expect you know, it's not going to update without me refreshing. But if I were to refresh, we expect to see this. And so hello world, my name, and again, it's cut off. But we want to center this. So we'll use the center widget. And again, if we go back here and we look at all the different widgets. So click on widgets. Well, let me go back a little bit more. If we go back on their layout widgets. And these are widgets that have to do with how you lay things out on the screen. So you click on layout widget, you can see that we have a center widget. And this widget centers stuff, like I said, vertically and horizontally. And it's very easy to use. So uh, you can, of course, look at the documentation, but we'll just use it for today. All right. So let's get back to our code. And so the way you use a center widget is you wrap widget within widget. So let me pause here and just tell you one thing. In Flutter, a lot of things, 
in terms of how you do is you build widgets upon widget and you build up a widget tree. We'll talk more about a widget tree in the next video. But what that means is that widgets are children or a child of another widget. So in this case, while our application is a widget, the way you would build a more complex application is by having the widget that represents your application have more widgets that are children or a child of it. So to make to drive that home, let me just do this. Let's say, so I'll enter and notice that I have the text here. So I'll call it var text, text, no confusion, okay? My return, I'll move it down below this variable. And so now I have two variables. I have my name, I have the text widget that I'm creating, but I want to center things on the screen. So I can use a center widget. So let's say I return a center widget. So right now my application simply returns a center widget and we know that how this center is child. But notice what it does is center is child. Remember what I told you, every widget in Flutter either takes a child or children. So this widget takes a child, as we could see, widget child. If it takes children, the property will be called children, and this would be a list of widget. So since it's center is child, let's just tell it what its child is. Its child is this text widget that I created above. Okay. And so if I allow that to save and restart, and I go back here, we'll see that now this widget centered my text vertically and horizontally on the screen. And that is how easy it is to do certain things in Flutter, especially when it comes to using the widget. They're pretty common sense. Not only are they named in a common sense way, but they're very easy to use. For the most part, when you use widgets, think about just whether it's a child or it's taking children. And the widget is gonna tell you that. Just simply hover over the widget and you're gonna see whether it takes a child or children. And we'll cover things like key, what are those used for and so on. And of course you can do other things each widget will have other properties like this height factor and width factor but for the most part you can just start off doing the basic things and see if you get that to work just like with the text widget we can pretty much get everything to work with the text widget without including any of these other things now it because i said that oh we're just using a text widget without specifying the direction that is why we have to tell the text widget how to lay things out but usually when you use the text widget you will not have to specify direction because your text widget will be a child of other widgets, whether immediate or some ancestor, which will specify the layout. We'll see that much later, but for now, let's, we, we need the direction. Okay, so we have a basic application which says, hello world. The colors might not be great, but at least it works. So I will end it here before the video gets too long. Before I go, the best way to learn Flutter, in my opinion, is to actually play around with it. So for example, since we, you've seen how to build a simple application with a, a text widget, go back to the text widget documentation and see what other things you can do. For example, here's this which text widget. Why not try using that? So let's, for example, let's just copy this by clicking this copy button and we can go back to our application and we can use that instead. So we can say, well, we have text and then we have text two. So var text two is equals to a constant widget. Don't worry about that. We're not gonna worry too much about whatever constant and so on. And then we can just change this to text two. And our application save, we restart and we go over here. Oh, well, same problem as before we need to specify a direction. So we copy the direction and bring it into our text widget. So we have to move this down to the bottom, right? So we give it the property of the text direction. The first property is the data and we restart our application again. And you can see, hello, beautiful world. And you can see it how part of it is italized, part of it is bold. And so you can experiment a little bit and just get a feel with just one widget at a time. This is my intention to play with one widget at a time and really understand that widget before combining it with other widgets. Okay. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.